Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to Morsi Royale. Welcome to a 3v3 pro match. Very rare that I actually do 3v3s or maybe even you could include 2v2s as well. But here we are today with an absolutely epic one for you or so I believe. Down in the bottom right, we have the uh, man himself, purple player that is Ammo, known as one of the best uh, team players. Pretty solid in pretty much any team format, whether it be 2v2s or 3v3s. Always plays alongside uh, DK Crazy, which is this guy. Also China Tank with the orange. And they are supported also by Peter up in the top right. Sometimes plays under a German name beginning with K uh, KU, something like that. I won't try and pronounce it. I won't even try and pronounce his surname. <laughs> well, I don't, know if it's, I don't think it's actually his surname. I think I know his real name, but I don't think it's Peter. He's playing with the also China Tank. Whoa, we're on a China Tank mirror. Okay, this is crazy. Up in the top middle, we have uh, Mary, which is the same guy as Peace Lover. He's in the green China tank. Top left, we've got Marikar with a Cyan China tank. He's going for the mid. And then down at the bottom left, we have Ayori with the blue China tank. I have a feeling this was from a challenge or a tournament or something because... Tank Mirror was one of the matchups. I remember even playing it myself. I can't remember if that was a tournament or just a challenge i think game number one was it was a tank mirror on defcon i think dk crazy is a big favorite here against iori i think ammo and marikar could be kind of balanced uh up at the top right peter against mary i think peter might have a more experience on uh on team games marikar's flame there gets stopped Quite easy, really, just to stop one flamer when you tank. It's like one battle master, one, one gat, and, and an outpost or anything can pretty much slow it down. Uh, ammo's gone for helix, and he's gone for four oils. It didn't used to be the meta where one player would get four oils. Uh, I think Xcal, to be honest, popularized it. Uh, and the reason it's good is because then one player can sure, uh, surely just, or purely rather, focus on two supplies, two war factories getting his prop. Doesn't have to worry about a barracks or red guard or anything like that. But then one player can actually upgrade the barracks, make a load of red guard, and make he uh, helix because he's got the barracks anyway. So it's just more efficient and then you only have to upgrade the capture upgrade one time as well. Rather than both players spending 1k to get the capture upgrade, only one person does it. And the other person goes more supply heavy. So I actually uh, I actually do favor it a lot. Uh, currently, the left team are taking a bit of a beating in the middle. Marikan needs support from his mates, but Peace Lover currently isn't bothered in helping. He is bringing the Helix in now, though, and that will be free kills on all of them. Actually, there's no anti-air apart from this one gap, but that's actually Ayori's. So this Helix here is going to get in loads of XP. Just watch Mary here, Peace Lover getting all of his xp he's gonna be level three or very close to le he's actually over level three that's crazy yeah peter making a bit of a mistake there going too far forward i suppose without any any anti-air whatsoever it was looking kind of good for him but if you skimp out and don't make even if you just made one gap that that uh would have been so good i don't know what ammo has been doing in the meantime probably should have been backing his uh, teammate up there with these helixes but maybe he's been Whoa, never heal it. Well, I don't know if that's the same Helix or not, but it comes in, kills one truck. Uh, maybe got one dozer as well there, because there seems to be only one dozer remaining for Peter. Marikov's back collected on the middle. Ammo now bringing in his own Helix. Almost loses it though. Doesn't actually have that much XP, hasn't killed that much, but he did get a little bit there from a couple of Battlemaster kills. Yeah, this is pretty exciting, you know. I'm actually glad I picked this replay to look at today. Because uh, Tank Mirror in 1v1 is just, like, so good to watch. So Tank Mirror in 3v3 is surely going to be great to watch as well. You can just think about all the support powers later, all the EMPs that could just massively change the game. DK Crazy going crazy on the bunkers. Living up to his name, but bunker-wise. 
think that's a bit overkill, to be honest. I think uh, you might be better off just having, like, a Battlemaster ECM combo there. Wow, massive engagement now. One Helix pulls for Merry. Ammo here with a few units in the middle, but Marikar seems to have the Battlemaster advantage with uh, combined with Mary's as well. But down here, though, DK Crazy is pushing into the middle and seemingly pushing Ayuri out of the way. Ayuri just have the autoloader upgrade, though. Another Helix rocks up now for Ammo. Artillery coming in for Mary. Could be on this position. It's actually kind of nice. Only killed actually two Battlemasters, but did weaken it and did force it back. Ammo now with a big presence in the middle as well. BK Crazy's mind out on his second. I think uh, for him, he needs to get a dozer in the middle and needs to start collecting on the mid. I'm confused why there's not a supply there and he's not bringing these trucks. Even if he's long distance collecting from the middle, it would be better than doing what he's doing. Currently, it like, seems a bit slow and, yeah, a bit overly defensive. You could even have a supply here from Crazy. Artillery coming in on one of the oils. I don't think... Oh, it actually nearly kills two. Okay. Rare to see that. So close, man. It just needs literally a one-tap and it is dead. So this is a pretty formidable army, but the, the, the part where it becomes dangerous is Merry... Ain't that far off level 5. One EMP could change things uh, drastically. You just need a few more Battlemaster kills and he will be level 5 because they give away 200 XP each. Peter is beaking in the oil. That's where he's artilleried. I think it would have been beneficial for him to start repairing that straight away, Ayuri. Does he have a CC? Yes, he does. He has mines on it as well. Bit weird from Peter, to be honest. Was that Battlemaster really necessary? Well, <laughs> it's causing Ayuri problems, apparently. Ayuri has all the upgrades. Massive tank engagement now in the middle. Ammo seems to have all the upgrades, and he's got a nuke as well, so no doubt he's researching the, the Battlemaster shot. And speed upgrade as well. Makes your Battlemaster army really, really insane. Peace Lover coming in with a... Or Mary coming in with a Helix. But it's actually just a Speaker Tower Helix. DK Crazy now collecting on the mid. Yeah, some players are surely going to reach level 5 soon. These, these Gats need moving to the back. Crazy trying to push up north. Ayuri's actually te teaming up with uh, with Mary to try and loop around here. So it's like a uh, clockwise movement going on. Helix is taking a lot of damage there. Huge engagement here. Who is going to come out on top of this Battlemaster engagement? Ammo has a lot of upgrades. Uh, Mary does not. Bit weird for Mary, I think, to be honest. He literally has no upgrades to the Battlemasters, but he has Helixes that tend to be pretty useless now. In general, I would not recommend focusing a lot on Helixes in Tank Mirrors. The reason is, if you even have one GAT, one ECM, it probably will kill one or two Helixes and scare them away. That is the reason why I would purely focus on ground on me. Of course, later on, if you've got the money advantage or whatever, sure, you can maybe squeeze one. One Licks out. Maybe you catch him off guard like his first Helix did catch him off guard, actually. Those two oils are dead. I heard an EMP. Whoa, I saw an EMP, rather. And... Whose is that? Ammos. Okay. <laughs> Merry is the first one to reach it, and he's actually redeeming himself with these Helixes. This is insane. Look at all these kills he's getting. Got four helixes and they are actually doing some work. Some crazy work. But yeah, as soon as they come back alive, you're forced away straight away. 
DK Crazy also level 5. His oils are gone too. Looks like a level 3 artillery again. But never mind drop in the middle. Marikar just running around with 4 ECMs. But I mean, what are you going to achieve with 4 ECMs? Another legendary EMP. DK Crazy moves in on this position. Only one RPG inside of the bunker. Bunker will be focused down and will go down very, very quick. Ayuri is out. And actually, I think this left team are dead. Uh, if we're going to talk about blame, <laughs> uh, I think Mary is a big part. Big part of this loss. In all honesty. I suppose Marikar hasn't got anything out yet uh, at the moment, but... I don't know. I think, I think the the right team here are just more solid and more uh, experienced in team games on DEFCON, for example. These Helix are still running around causing problems, actually, where there is a few gats. But DK Crazy... It's destroying Ayuri on this left side. Artillery coming in. Mind drop. It's level 3 artillery, man. It's almost killing two worlds a few times. That carpet definitely finishes it. EK Crazy losing a few tanks to this bunker. I think DK Crazy and Ammo are just too solid of team players compared to the whole compared to the whole left side. I mean, Marikar is good. But I don't think he's DK Crazy good in team games. And yeah, well, Mary or Peace Lover, whatever you want to call him, has been running around with the Helixes, getting some good kills here and there. Uh, he kind of took a big bad fight earlier, didn't he? Wasted all of his tanks. There's four tanks dropped off inside of Marikar's base. But I think that DK Crazy and Ammo are just too big. They've got the whole middle. All they have to do really is hold the middle. Uh, the left team, top left team rather, are all the ones under pressure. Carpet Bomb coming in from Mary. Loses one licks. Comes in with the other licks. Loses one more. Oh, was that the same one or not? I don't know. I don't know now. I don't know why these gats for Peter aren't doing anything. He hasn't really got anything apart from a few gats next to the helixes. Does manage to pick off one anyway. Marikar moving in with what little he has. Trying to make something happen in the middle. Takes out a power plant. Mind drop is now behind him. So he can't retreat from this position. He is committed. Don't think it really matters at all, though we actually have a nuke fired. Gonna be there, surely. What? Oh, there it is. Okay, so it was Lotus trying to capture it. Got shot by the Mega. It took a while to reach his target, didn't it? I suppose that's the fly across the map. He looks just for Mary coming in again. I mean, they are coming in, having elements of success. But would it have been more beneficial to have a big tank blob on the ground? Don't know. Artillery coming in from Iori. I suppose that's if we look at the XP, you can work out who's killed what. I suppose Peter's... Behind Marikar actually hasn't killed a lot. Maybe for assigning blame. <laughs> Maybe it's Marikar and Ayori actually. <clears throat> Think maybe the top left team did it in the wrong order as well. Maybe the middle player should be the one going for helixes. And maybe two, two uh, four rolls. Marikar did get kicked off the mid. He went for the mid and then he needed backup. 
earlier on. I personally hate it. I play I play mid in Defcon quite a lot. I'll go mid, and then I get tripled in the mid and get kicked off it, and then I'm in a really weak position. And then my mates will come later on to help out in the mid, but I'm already kicked off it and weak. So, yeah, it's all about that communication and, and teamwork. One player is going for the mid. You need the help of your mates. You, you can't go for mid yourself, and then your mates just be bunkering off their side and messing around. Doesn't uh, it doesn't work if you, if you one player goes mid and gets kicked off? Trust me, it's not good. EMP potluck shot trying to get some EMP, uh, trying to get some uh, EMPs on the helixes, I think. So yeah, he's going to run him out with his helixes, trying to get something done. But what realistically can you get done? Peter's not in a good way, so maybe Mary is. <laughs> it might even be the MVP here. Carpet bomb comes in. He obviously thought there was still a war factory or something there, but it's been sold or whatever. Okay, we've got four mix. They will be locked onto the helixes, and that weak one, I'm pretty sure, is going to die. Uh, nope. As she goes for a stronger one, loses a loses a licks for it. I don't think it really matters to be honest. Though we've got artillery coming in from Mary, got artillery coming in from Crazy, kills two buildings up in the top left. Propaganda and a barracks. Artillery coming in from Mary, going to miss the target though. Does not kill anything at all. And Mary has also been defeated. Yeah, so I think the bottom right team just did, did quite a few things better. I think one player grabbing four royals is better. I think the mid player going helix is better. I think the two side players going heavier on the tanks is better. I think Marikar going mid and then not really being supported by his mates and getting kicked off it was was bad. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, even though Mary did kind of good, if we actually have a look at units destroyed, actually maybe Mary was MVP of the whole game. Look at that, 124 unit skills here. Maybe we can't say anything too bad about him. But I think Ayuri versus Crazy, there's a drastic level of uh, skill difference between those two on the side. So eventually Ayuri is going to 99% of the time die to Crazy. It's just like the hard, hard truth. And yeah, I suppose Peter did get outplayed by Mary. Just look at the stats difference there. Marikar, yes, he's only killed 23 units. Had very little impact. He's running around with four e e ECMs. But I suppose when you go for mid and then get kicked off it because of lack of support from your mates, that's bound to happen. So can't take too much away from that. But yeah, anyway, do let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with my analysis? Do you think anything different? Have I got this wrong? Do you think a certain player is stronger here? Uh, I suppose Ammo collected the most in the middle. Killed 80 as well, which is the second highest. So yeah, like I said, he's a solid uh, solid team player. You can always rely on him, whether he plays on the side or in the mid. On any t team game, 2v2, 3v3, is always solid. And uh, yeah, same with DK Crazy. Yeah, GG, well played. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.